Hi folks, welcome to this video and this series. I'm Charles and this is me traveling from my home close to Montreal in Quebec in Canada all the way to British Columbia, to Vancouver, God willing. Um, I'm going to be splitting this up into five, six, eight episodes. Who knows? Because I'm not going to subject you to a four-hour video. As you can see by the color of my face, I'm already halfway through this thing. This is the end of day four. I hope you have a good time watching this and let's get right into it. I want to thank my employer for allowing me to buy all the stuff that I use on this trip and for allowing me the time off. Nobody sent me anything. Nobody uh, is asking me for any kind of uh, sponsorship message or anything like that. So please don't, don't skip like two minutes because we're, we're getting right into it now. Welcome. It is Sunday morning. Stepping over the bank. Today, just get out of here. Today is a big day because today is the day if I that I decide if I'm going to be calling an audible on the planned uh, route for my trip because um, ahead are four very, very long days, um, 750 kilometer average days, and uh, I don't feel like, you know, dying or uh, getting in a dangerous situation, so what's going to happen is I'm going to go stop and fuel up here for a second on this road here, and uh, then we're going to go to Nice Provincial Park, and the plan for Nice Provincial Park is that's the spot where I'm supposed to camp tonight, and the camping tonight, and most especially the uh, night's sleep I'm going to be getting, are going to be very, very telling for the rest of this trip. Uh, because on night number one, on the episode you hopefully just watched, um, I didn't sleep very well, and I did, uh, what was it, 550 kilometers thereafter, and that was fine, it's just I got to the hotel uh, around 5.30, 6 o'clock last night, and uh, I was just absolutely destroyed, and I couldn't imagine having to do another 200, right, before getting to another campground, and then not sleeping again, and that created a whole bunch of anxiety for me, and it was just... It's not healthy, and I'm, I'm trying to pull something off here and take this motorcycle to BC in about a week. And because it's the middle of summer, and because it's you know vacation season and whatever, is you you have to reserve ahead like campgrounds and hotels and so on. I can reschedule some hotels, but you can't uh, cancel outright a campground. It's not a lot of money to just not show up, but then it messes up the whole schedule for the rest of the trip, right? So that, that's kind of what the problem is with um, the schedule I, I put on myself. Um, Petro Canada here is where we're gonna stop for fuel and I will continue rambling on in a second. Like I began to say, you can't really reschedule campgrounds once you've paid for them, that's about it. The, the idea you have, uh, if you can't show up, don't want to show up, whatever, whatever, you just lost 35, 40, 45 dollars, it's not a huge deal. Um, and you can try and see if in the town you're supposed to be in, uh, if there are hotels or motels that'll accommodate. And tonight, is not going to be an option because I'm visiting a very remote provincial park and there just aren't any options um, for that kind of thing uh, today. But tomorrow I'm staying in a campground, um, or at least I'm supposed to stay in a campground in a town where there are camp, uh, hotels and motels available. It's a bigger sized town. So if I'm really screwed and I, I don't sleep very well tonight and I wake up tomorrow morning and everything's really wet and dewy and disgusting like it was uh, yesterday morning and that delays my start and so on, then uh, I might decide to pack up the wet stuff in some dry bags and uh, start calling and see if anywhere has, uh, has vacancy. It's just money, right? You don't want to 
sacrifice safety for the sake of, hey, I want the experience of camping. So we're gonna turn onto this street here and hopefully this takes us to Highway 17, which is a section of the uh, Trans-Canada Highway. And uh, just go from there, you know, just give her. Sault Ste. Marie is about 295 kilometers away. That might be the first stop, but uh, it, it, I might stop before. Like I said, I want to try to break it up in 200 sections and investing in some time off, uh, off the saddle, even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, early in the day really pays off on the tail end of your day. We'll see if we stop before Sault Ste. Marie. If not, I'll reconnect then. Sunday, going to church. Okay, so we're approaching a town called Algoma Mills. There's the sign. And uh, it's on the shores of, I think, uh, Lake Huron, because of where it's located, uh, there seems to be quite a few really nice uh, viewing spots, rest areas, lookouts, scenic uh, areas. Today I'm really imposing a, a break schedule on myself compared to yesterday. Yesterday I just I was just trying to, to get where I needed to go. And today I'm taking my time a little bit more. There's more kilometers today, but I, I really wanna take 10 minutes here every uh, 200 kilometers or so. Let's see if there's a rest area coming up with, uh, I don't know, maybe a boat launch I can look at, uh, maybe here. Okay, let's take a look at what this is. Let's take a look at what this is. Uh, no, that won't do it. Here, but I want... I want a nice looking spot. Here's the LCBO. Well, that sucks. Is there a gas station at least? So what you're saying, Algoma Mills, is that there's nowhere for me to stop and chill. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a rest area on the right, but I want to check this out on the left because it looks like a good spot. But I'm gonna I'm gonna check out this spot on the right here. And see if I can't have a, a quick seat in the shade or something. That looks nice. Let's see. Maybe have a cliff bar or something. All right. Yeah, that looks all right. That looks kind of cool. Maybe I'll check out this spot. All right. Let's have a quick seat here. That looks all right, doesn't it? All right, that was a really nice spot. Uh, next to the fire department. But uh, I was chatting with that nice, uh, nice man. He used to ride. We got to talking a little bit. He used to ride gold wings and stuff. So yeah, that was all fun. I ate a cliff bar, had some water, took a waz, and uh, now I'm able to yeah get back on the road. And I've got uh, 160 or so uh, before Sault Ste. Marie and my potential lunch break. Let this guy by, even though I have my own lane. There we go. It just gives me more room. All right. It's 
really nice here. We're uh, riding along uh, a very nice sort of windy road a little bit and uh, we are riding along this river. So it's nice and wide open. The weather is beautiful and uh, we are going along. Folks, we're turning off the highway now into Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. This is a big enough town. It's like 75,000, 80,000 people. It's got an, uh, an Ontario Hockey League team, actually. Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, I think I'm right in saying. And uh, I'm going to look for a place because it's time for some food and a poo. So it's going to be a burrito, guys. Uh, it looks promising. Bar burrito. Fresh Mexican grill. I'll be the judge of that. I'll let you know how I get on, uh, provided I find a parking spot there. All right, so Operation Sustenance is a success. Defecation continues to be challenging, but uh, I mean... Also, I've done some fuel math and... Uh, not only won't I make it to knees on this tank, that's the campground I'm supposed to be at tonight. Um, if I fuel up now, I won't make it to Thunder Bay either. So what I have to do is fuel in uh, a town called Wawa, which is about halfway between uh, knees and here, or here and knees. And uh, I just about think I can make it to Wawa, but I'm not sure. And it's a massive provincial park road until then and there's not much fuel if I need to be like kind of cautious I have what's my range yeah I see 230 clicks and it's 240 to Wawa so I'm not gonna risk it so what I'll do is I'll just fuel up here and then I shall top up in uh, in Wawa and then from Wawa I know I can make it to Thunder Bay safely tomorrow morning it's all about range math people Let us uh, grab this uh, street here. It's shocking road conditions, jeez. And then just before we jump back on the 17, there's a petrol can waiting. So the burrito was good. It wasn't bad. Um, the double espresso was nice. I stopped at Starbucks on in the hopes that uh, my GS could find another GS to mate with. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't very busy, so my GS was uh, on its own, and uh, nobody wants to see that. Alas, I digress. Uh, the terrain is changing slightly. Where this is a lot more hilly, and uh, there is moose here at night, but we're not uh, anywhere near that yet. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. This is a nice view. Look at this. Hopefully this is the kind of ride I'm, I can expect. If I can pass this guy. to this for a while.
Lake Superior. That's a nice change. So Lake Superior, which this is, has some of the clearest water known to man, apparently. I mean, it's a glacier melt lake from the last ice age. Um, let me know in the comments if you know why the water is so clear. Maybe it has something to do with the bottom of the lake being super sandy, maybe, or I don't know. You tell me. But this is great. Give me it, give me it, give me a few, give me it. Give me a few. Ah, there it is. Good lord! I mean, you can't see across that. <laughs> yes. Look at it. That's insane. are immaculate. Look at the asphalt. That's just beautiful. It's been like this for a while. We have about 125 to Wawa on our fuel stop. This is great. Sheer rocks. We have this at home, but I mean not in front of a massive lake. They must have blown this to smithereens to build this road. Jesus. And then you turn left and you got this. Look at it. Yeah, this 18-wheeler is giving her. Come on, bud. Oh, you idiot. Yeah, see, that's a an imbecile right there. Come on, go for it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, God. See, this is the worst case scenario. You have a big rig that can't pass. You have an idiot in a rental car out front and then the big rig just doesn't want to drop. Drop! There you go. And I'm going to try to get by the Volkswagen, but... Uh, Alright, now the mission is to get by this camper. I mean, I'll do it easily. It's just uh, now I can't uh, comment on how beautiful the scenery is. So after that passing debacle, we are out front. And uh, now I can slow down a little bit and uh, enjoy the scenery. And what a scenery it is. This is uh, Lake Superior. So far, it's been a really great afternoon. The burrito is uh, digesting quite nicely. Uh, the coffee has not produced the desired effect other than inject me with a little bit of energy. And I think there's a little bit of a an outcroft where I can uh, look left here for a second. Yeah. So I, I'm not stopping in any of these um, bays or outlooks because I picked up a, a national uh, or a provincial park that has a nice view itself. So. Hopefully I'm not missing out, and I'll be back. I mean, it's gorgeous, but uh, I think I have a gorgeous view uh, planned for the evening. So uh, I need to try and make good time, so I'm not stopping anywhere. I'll be back. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is my first uh, foray into mountain-ish riding. Uh, I've ridden north of Montreal a little bit. There's, there's some mountains there, but nothing close to this. Now, this isn't the Rockies. I'm sure in a few days I'm going to be utterly bewildered by the magnificence thereof. But, uh, 
for now this is pretty good we're, we're, we're getting further and further away from the lake which is over there so it's getting warmer it's like 22 now uh, but the air is crisp there's zero humidity it, it must be like 30 percent humidity or something i got 100 clicks to wawa which is my next stop as i've said nobody on the road a few cars a couple trucks but uh it's not bad for a Sunday afternoon. This one I'll stop. This one I'll stop. <clears throat> All right, this one I had to stop. Dear Lord, let's see if I can go, uh, I saw a BMW there, maybe they want to chat, maybe not, but that's Lake Superior, that's pretty crazy. I came from all the way over there, and then back to here. So, uh, yeah, took some pictures, sent a couple, had a quick call with a friend of mine. And uh, now I will be back on my way. And uh, like I said, into Wawa will just be for fuel. And that's very, very okay. I didn't really talk with that couple, but that's all right. I was uh, busy doing my own thing. That view was sensational. Now I gotta be careful coming out of this because people are coming up that hill. Everything seems fine. Okay, so we've made it out of uh, Lake Superior Provincial Park. There uh, is a town about 12 kilometers out, Wawa, as I've mentioned, so we're going to be fueling up there and then straight to Nice Provincial Park, 200 more kilometers. Uh, come, come drive or ride this road if you can, uh, Highway 17 between uh, Sault Ste. Marie and uh, Wawa. To me, that was a complete unknown. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. It keeps the energy up to see other bikes and to, you know, stay mentally and physically active on these windy roads. Relatively high speed stuff. I mean, this is technically highway speeds. Um, and uh, the scenery is amazing. You can stop like I did at a few stops, even though I just stopped at one. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, it shortens the day mentally when you have roads like this. Uh, the asphalt is pristine. A few bumps here and there, but really honestly, no cracks, no holes, no nothing. And then you're just surrounded with, you know, lakes and uh, just just beauty, just natural, natural beauty. So it's, it's great. Um, I'll report back once I've fueled up as we get closer to uh, my campsite for the night. Batanga Provincial Park, about 150 clicks uh, east of Nice Provincial Park, where I'm staying. 
Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a bit past 4:30. Everything's great. Uh, I'm almost by myself on the road here, at this direction at least. Uh, it's brilliant. The weather is holding up. It's clouding over over there, but really no danger of rain as far as the forecast is concerned. Uh, there might be a town called White River, 40 kilometers away. Uh, yeah, just listening to my tunes. I got some classic rock uh, playlist going. Yeah, I got about a, an hour and a half here. Uh, doing 106, 105, according to the GPS. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, about 80 clicks to go. I'm getting kind of ready to set up camp and I hope I won't have to deal with any rain. Uh, there's um, dark, dark skies and ominous clouds west of here. Uh, they were calling for thunder showers in Thunder Bay, ironically. And uh, I don't know if it'll reach the provincial park where I'm staying, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. White Lake Narrows. Kind of nice. I'm sure there are. Uh, I'm sure there are uh, plenty of uh, nice little cottages that uh, festoon the uh, the sides of the lake. There, the shores. I can see some stuff over there. Maybe a nice resort type situation. Nice. I'm not sure about the look of this. Um, I really don't want to pull over and f***ing change and then... I got 68 clicks to go before the... Uh, before camp, but there's a town called Marathon before. Uh, oh god, I'm gonna have to play an audible if it starts raining. Uh, setting up camp in the rain in motorcycle gear is a massive, massive pain in the ass. With the helmet, you don't want to take it off, you don't know where to put it, it's just complete madness. So anyways, I hope it doesn't rain, and uh, future me will look at this video during the editing process and laugh or cry at what is about to ensue. So they are, uh, check this out, painting the road ahead. And uh, therefore, I am stuck at the back of this queue with uh, dark clouds and zero cover. Uh, this is going to be fun. A, I hope this doesn't last forever, and B, uh, the blue skies ahead are going to at least get rid of these clouds, but I really hope it's very, very soon. People are accelerating somewhat. Does that mean the truck is about to move? Uh, please save me from this. Please save me from this. Like, it's Sunday afternoon, you're, you're painting now, today. Uh, hasn't started raining yet. Uh, I'm hoping to get under those white clouds and the light and the blue sky very soon. Because, uh, yeah, I get a drop here and there, but it's really not raining. Uh, if I get past this, I won't have to put the camera away. This is a good test for the anxiety, this. <laughs> it looks like we might, might be done. I hesitate to say it, but... I'm shifting it to second. Good.
we are good. That took maybe 12, uh, 13 minutes. Uh, okay, so in the town of Marathon, a few minutes ago, I heard Sultans of Swing play on my playlist. And that's a good omen if there ever was one. <laughs> uh, we are uh, 15 minutes away from our descent towards um, Lake Superior. And look what we have above. I mean, first, the view is magnificent. Uh, we're going downhill. Elevation is about 300 meters. Going down, so we got little lakes and so on. And blue skies up above. There's a couple hours of sunlight left, usable daylight. Uh, so hopefully the sun will come out long enough to warm me up before I have dinner, allow me to set up camp and change, and maybe go for a walk on the beach a little bit, and so on. Okay, so we're less than 10 minutes from our final destination of the day. The blue sky is coming. We are uh, definitely in a descent. There's construction here and there. I'm just trying to be careful. Uh, Lake Superior is just ahead and the disastrous and calamitous events surrounding the unfortunate uh, road painting here are, uh, set me back a good 15 minutes. So, uh, so, that, so that's my problem. So that's my problem, a good 15 minutes late here and uh, I gotta change this battery. All right, we've turned into the campground road Nice Provincial Park. I'm very excited. Uh, hopefully my battery. Yeah, I got a few minutes left here. Uh, that was my face. All right, it's bumpy, but it's fine. I have a GS. I can stand and it's asphalt. Yeah, steering with my feet. I'm not getting run over by a train. Yeah, there we go. All right. All vehicles must display a valid parking permit. I do not have a parking permit. I will park at my campground at my leisure. Uh, at my campsite. All right. We're going down because we're going down to the to the lake is what's going on. All right. I'm all checked in and uh, super comical. I just plugged the GoPro into the bike for like two minutes while it uh, while I drive down to my side just so it survives, <laughs> and I'll change the battery. Uh, I'll change the battery uh, at the site. Um, no expectation of rain, and there's also zero service. The park was kind enough to offer uh, me to call a couple numbers uh, at home. So I could have somebody uh, in the family let everybody know that I was here and that I was safe and everything was fine. Because I probably won't have phone service until, uh, well, at all, I guess, tomorrow morning. Uh, so we're just going to take a short ride to the campsite here, number 76. And uh, it should be nice. Overcast, overnight, no rain, no rain tomorrow morning. So I'm just going to put the tent up and I won't bother putting the, uh, the tarp up. They did advise that I should hang my food and my toiletries, which is what I will do. Uh, there's no need for uh, for there to be any bear. But she was hesitant. She was like, uh, I don't know, like, yeah, I guess. So then that means do it, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so, so far, I mean, there's pavement, so it should be really nice. And there's the lake, look at that, and the sun is coming out. This is going to be brilliant. If I can have a decent sunset, this is going to be brilliant. I have to go back to the uh, the camp office to grab my firewood. The uh, cargo net should suffice for that endeavor. All right. All right. All right. People are already starting their fires. And this is me. All right, so battery's a little bit recharged. Um, I'm all set up. I got my firewood for the evening. My tent's all set up. The bike is back there. Uh, the cargo net worked beautifully to retrieve the firewood. The beach is over there, and I want to show you why I picked this place. Come with me.
Well, being backlit might not be the best idea, but uh, this is why I picked this spot. I'm gonna get a killer view when the sun sets, and uh, I'm gonna sit here, enjoy a little bit of red wine. This is a nice Chianti. And uh, I have a little bit of uh, tobacco as well. I have a little Ascot cigar with me. This will last a half an hour maybe uh, while I enjoy the, uh, the water. You care to join me? Very nice. Very nice. I will now uh, ponder my travels so far. Oh, that's so nice. I've been waiting for this for two days. The road's been tough, um, yesterday especially, with um, the lack of sleep. I told you about that, maybe along the road a little bit, and um, I think I'll sleep a little bit better tonight. The weather looks nicer, it's way less humid for sure. I'm in the wood a bit, if I was out here it'd be really amazing, but uh, I'm not, and so I'll just have to make do with it. I, at first I thought about eating my dinner here um, and then I saw the sunset and I figured there's just it's just too good not to go eat out there so I'm just gonna boil here and uh, go eat out there I got my thermosel taking care of all of my bug protection needs and uh, I just got to pick what's on the menu I think something that goes well with red wine primavera chicken no Three cheese lasagna, uh, rustic three cheese sausage lasagna. That is interesting. All right, time to munch. It's been the appropriate amount of minutes. It smelled really good when I poured the water in. Cheers. That's really good. <laughs> Damn it. It's a pretty incredible place. I'll link the website for the provincial park down there. I haven't gone to bed yet, but so far, no humidity, no bugs on the beach, of course. <clears throat> it's just it's just a beautiful place to sit and have a meal and have some wine and let me know if you've been here already. Uh, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Uh, have you ridden here on a bike? If you Have you ridden Western Ontario on a motorcycle? Let me know. I'm sure some of you have. I'd be very interested to find out what, uh, what you thought. Comment, like, subscribe.